During World War II, survival wasn't just about bullets and bravery. It was about endurance. In the frozen mud of Europe and the endless cold of the Eastern Front, soldiers faced a constant enemy that couldn't be shot or reasoned with. The cold. Frostbite, hypothermia, and frozen rations killed morale faster than enemy artillery. But in the middle of that misery, one of the simplest and most brilliant survival hacks emerged. The trench heater that burned for nearly 48 hours straight. Built from scraps, fueled by whatever was available, and engineered by necessity, this heater kept entire dugouts and shelters warm long after the flames had gone out. Anyone who studied the front lines knows that most of the time wasn't spent fighting. It was spent waiting. Soldiers huddled in damp trenches or underground bunkers, surrounded by mud, rats, and bitter air that cut straight through wool coats. Fires were banned at the front because smoke could reveal positions to the enemy. Even when fires were allowed, wood was wet or scarce, and ordinary stoves burned out in hours. Men froze in their sleep, their rifles jammed with ice, and their rations turned to solid blocks. In these conditions, a steady, long-burning heat source was more valuable than gold. And that's where the secret trench heater came in. This wasn't an official army-issued item. It was a field invention, passed along between soldiers, improved in secret, and kept alive through ingenuity. It used nothing more than a few metal containers, some sand, and a mixture of fuel that burned slowly and cleanly. It required no constant feeding, and could last for two full days on a single fill. For men living underground, it was nothing short of miraculous. The heater's design was astonishingly simple. The base was often a tin can, mess tin, or even an ammo box. Inside, soldiers poured sand or dirt until it was nearly full, then added a generous amount of fuel, most often a mix of diesel, kerosene, or animal grease scavenged from the field kitchens. They stirred the mixture until the sand absorbed it like a sponge. Then, using a piece of cloth, string, or twisted rope, they created a wick and pushed it into the centre. When lit, the fuel didn't flare up. It smouldered slowly, releasing a steady low flame and heat that could last 24 to 48 hours, depending on the mix. It worked on the same principle as an oil lamp, but, you know, with added insulation from the sand, which slowed the burn and prevented waste. The sand also made it safe to bury partially in the trench wall or floor, allowing heat to radiate into the earth without melting nearby materials. A small tin lid, or, say, a flat piece of metal, could be placed on top to simmer rations, boil coffee, or even dry wet gear. With one of these heaters in the corner of a bunker, a few men could keep the space habitable through the worst conditions. Some soldiers refined the design further by punching small air holes at the base to improve oxygen flow. Others added a second can around the first, creating an insulated chamber that made the burn even more efficient. These were field engineers at their finest, working with whatever they had, solving life-or-death problems with scavenged materials. The reason this heater could last up to 48 hours came down to the fuel-to-air balance. Instead of letting liquid fuel burn quickly in open air, it was forced to burn through layers of sand and sediment. The sand acted like a regulator, releasing the fuel vapours slowly rather than all at once. That's why the flame never got too large. It stayed small and controlled, ideal for confined trenches and shelters where smoke and open flames were a risk. This simple design gave soldiers something rare consistency. While others had to relight fires every few hours or, you know, go without, a single heater could maintain warmth overnight 
or even through an entire watch cycle. It also made cooking possible without smoke plumes rising into the sky, crucial in combat zones where even a puff of smoke could draw enemy mortar fire. In many ways, it was as important to trench life as the rifle itself, because without warmth, a soldier couldn't shoot, think, or, well, survive. The trench heater design has incredible relevance for anyone interested in off-grid living, bushcraft, or survival preparedness. To recreate it today, you only need a small metal container. An old paint can or coffee tin works perfectly. Fill it about three-quarters full with dry sand, then pour in enough diesel or lamp oil to saturate it. Stir the mixture with a stick until it feels, you know, moist but not soupy. Next, insert a cotton rope, strip of fabric, or even a twisted piece of paper towel as a wick. Light the wick carefully, and you'll see a steady flame form at the top. Once the metal heats up, it will radiate warmth for hours. For safety and efficiency, place the heater on a non-flammable surface like a stone or concrete base. Covering it loosely with another can or pot can help direct the heat upward, making it ideal for boiling water or warming food. If you want longer burn time, add more sand or slightly reduce the amount of fuel. In cold, windy conditions, a small trench or pit can shield the flame while trapping the heat, just as soldiers did in the 1940s. This method remains one of the most fuel-efficient low-tech heating systems ever created. It's simple enough to build in minutes, yet reliable enough to last for days. Campers, preppers and homesteaders have rediscovered it in recent years under names like sand candle heater or field oil stove. But the truth is, it was born from war, desperation and human ingenuity. The 48-hour trench heater is a forgotten masterpiece of field innovation. It represents the soldier's ability to adapt, to turn scarcity into function, and survival into a science. When you look at its design, you realize that it wasn't just about keeping warm, it was about control. In an environment where nothing was certain, this little heater gave men a sense of stability and self-reliance. It's a quiet example of how knowledge and resourcefulness often matter more than the tools themselves. Today, the same principle applies whether you're surviving outdoors, preparing for emergencies, or simply wanting to understand how things were done when there was no backup plan. The secret trench heater is proof that even the simplest materials, sand, oil, and a can, can become the difference between freezing and thriving. If you enjoyed uncovering this piece of forgotten wartime survival history, make sure to subscribe to Backyard Wisdom and share this story with fellow history enthusiasts. Every week, we bring you lost innovations, field-tested methods, and real-world lessons from the past that still hold power today. The trench heater may have been born in the mud of war, but its flame still burns for those who value ingenuity over comfort and self-reliance over dependence.